So this is probably, um, in real terms, the most valuable thing we actually do in our project boat sort yes. of schedule. Correct. And that is get boats like this and run the numbers on them, the actual fuel burn numbers, performance numbers. So yep. uh, twin, whatever they were, 165 horsepower um, stern drives. Yep. And we got Glenno from Yamaha to come down yep. and uh, we ran the fuel numbers and this is they. So it is a seminal day in the, uh, in the life of Beast 2, Beast 2.0. Glenn Gibson from Yamaha is here. Hey, Yamaha. Yeah, Nick. This is the first. Uh, there are some issues with the tilt and trim on one down? of our legs, one or both. There, I'd stop pushing the buttons. I think it'll help when we start it. <laughs> uh, Gibbo, Gibbo, welcome to Beast 2.0. Just tell me, uh, first impressions? Yeah, um, pretty much the same as the last time we done Beast 1. I'm a little bit like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's just hope that we can keep it running long enough to even do what we want to achieve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So <laughs> this one's bigger. It is, there is more, it is like the other one, but there is more of it. There is more old fiberglass. <laughs> there is more old engines. There is more of everything. Yeah, that's right. And I, I look under the cow there and yeah. there is more problems. Yes, and, yes. Uh, so I'm looking forward to it. There's a nice big box out the back here with two beautiful outboards sitting there. It'll be a, a, a lot prettier of a thing. Today we get baseline performance fuel data. We're going to push her in. If she starts, Hardy's at the helm. We'll get some important data. Is that engine down? Does it go down any more than that? Yeah, it does. In she goes again. Wet feet, no wet feet. Don't get wet feet. I'm not going to get wet feet. She's going, Glenno! <laughs> I don't know for how long though, mate. Right. I don't know for how long though. Right. Hey! She's going! Hey! The aerial's broken already. What happened to the aerial? We didn't do that, but I like to drive from up here. Well, can we you're get right? help if we need We're it? You're go good. Do you want to shunt? Yeah, you're clear. I'm clear. Uh-oh. Okay. Glad I. Flights. She's a flighter. We've <laughs> got something to start with. Right oh. Oh, here we He's go. He's a floater. You're a great help, Glenn, I think. I didn't do anything. No, no. Or is that what you meant? Yeah. Whoa. I didn't pick up on that. Now, as is often the case, the engines require a bit of a tune-up before we leave port. Fortunately, there was an expert on hand. Thanks, Johnny. That's what you need if you've got a boat like this. Need you. Glenn had spent the morning swearing and connecting up his box of tricks, but finally we were ready to go and see what this baby could do. work now happening Glenno. We are both engines today. This is the happy part of today. That's a thousand mate. Rightio, gotcha. Uh, that you are here and we have timed your arrival with both our engines including the unhappy starboard engine working. We've owned this boat for about five weeks and in the course of that five week ownership we have fixed a major oil leak, a very major fuel leak. We've had a, um, a, rough, a rough running issue with that engine but today Sounds perfect. Well, look, just to get it off the trailer today, we've had a gentleman come down and push on the distributor, which certainly changed things. And I had to lean on the leg to actually get it to trim down. But look, all in all, we're on the water. We're floating. We're able to get some data. We're going good. It is kind of the point of this whole project, though. This is a 1980s model boat. Um, and irrespective of how good your 1980s model boat is, every time you take it out, there is a very real possibility that you'll need your toolkit or your mechanic. Yeah, look, that's what's going to be interesting to see with this. This is a genuine old carbureted motor, you know. Let's go back into our old Chevy days. And, yeah. And, you know, we're going to be replacing it with something with, with the ultimate in engine management system, EFI over carburation. 
we've got a lot of expectations of where we're going to go. This data will help us realise that and make sure that, you know, the big That's 1,500 right there, mate. Thank you. So, Glenna, we're doing speed and we're doing fuel consumption and we're looking for economy and range and all those sorts of things. Yeah, it's exactly what we're going to do is work out our speeds and our fuel burn. Um, look, we're going to expect a lot more RPM and a lot more boat speed out of our ports, but in the usable ranges, will give us some real good information. Yeah, yeah, right. Well, fingers crossed she keeps going. Maybe you all that. Smells. Maybe 1750. I don't think we've got that one. Yeah, have you got 1750? Yeah. I know that it's old, I know the boys are saying it's old and it's loud and whatever else and those things are true and look, you can do this and not really steer anywhere, it's very very loose and yes it stalls at the marina and then it beeps and everyone looks at you as you drift in to other people's boats and hit them hard but for 20 grand she hasn't let us down yet, yep they've had to fix it, if I had it myself and I'm not very handy I wouldn't be on the water. But the boys are handy and they've fixed it and she's still going. That is wide open throttle. You're sort of waiting for the bang. And you know, you know the bang might come. So the most interesting part about this is we're going wide open throttle. We're doing 48 kilometres an hour and I can't hear myself think. I'm sorry. Hey, what? what's that? That's wide open throttle. Gotcha. There she goes. Where else would you be? numbers are going to prove very, very interesting. How fast is that? That's 50.5 kilometres per hour. 50.5 kilometres an hour. This boat, I know it's going to go bang soon, but gee, it's a good boat. Righto, so here are the facts. At 1500 RPM, which is about the perfect trolling speed of seven knots, Beast 2 is consuming around 14 litres of juice per hour. Not terrible. When we open her up to 2700 RPM, which is the sweet spot, the speed goes up to 19 knots or 35 kilometres per hour and fuel burn increases to 40 litres an hour. That's actually pretty economical for a boat this size. It's a bit slow, but pretty frugal. At wide open throttle, the old stern drives can manage an asthmatic 3200 RPM and a top speed of 26 knots or 49 kilometres per hour. Fuel burn has doubled to 80 litres an hour and it feels like something is about to go bang in a big way. All in all though, Beast 2 in her original guise isn't too bad on fuel. She is however very loud, pretty slow and horribly unreliable. There's your steering problems right there. That is loosey-goosey, mate. Um, but those numbers we just collected, it has to be said, those Mercruisers are not too bad on fuel. Yeah, look, I was surprised. Uh, we've got our challenges ahead yep. of us, but I think, it'll, um, I think we'll surprise everybody with a couple of brand Don't new Don't break airports. it, mate. This one's very good, though, isn't it, compared to that one. Well, I think <laughs> the numbers, you know, the numbers stack up OK, but fuel numbers are just one small part of well, what we're trying. Well, you'd have to fix this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can like, you fix that? I can't fix that, no. You probably need an Allen key for that, <laughs> I reckon. I think it's time, Andrew, to see a man with a spanner in a yep. shed and just say, all right, all of this, yep. black parts, yep. out, yep. gone. And we start basically again here. What do you think? Some new bits yep. right here. Brand spanking, press button, turnkey, new bits. Into gear nicely. Go fast too, fast. And quiet. Yeah, what? Huh? Use a ring. <laughs>
Tinnitus, they call that. Tinnitus. We were expecting the numbers mm. to be a lot heavier than that. It was um, a problem, wasn't it? It was a bit of a problem because <laughs> we thought, what are we doing? We're taking those, you know, 1980 stern drives out that basically don't use very much fuel. No, we were expecting them to be pretty hard on yeah. gas, you know. Um, they weren't working that hard, but, you know, there was sort of a fair bit going on. Um, yeah. But as it turned out, it was actually not a bad package. Performance was pretty good. Yeah. Fuel economy was pretty good. Reliability, not great. Not um, great. No. And top speed, not great. Um, so we thought we'd had a little bit to work with. Yeah. But um, no, she wasn't a bad boat for 20 grand. For 20 grand. If you could put up with the maintenance of it, by all means, knock yourself out and go and get one. But yes. um, we had bigger plans, obviously, Hardy. Indeed. And for the next instalment uh, in the journey of Beast 2, we get about doing a spot of wrenching. <laughs> and, uh, you know. um, pulling out uh, <laughs> engines and you know that never goes well for us a spot of wrenching ah! oh <laughs> yes if you're enjoying uh, this little series that we're doing please like and subscribe to our channel because we're going to be uploading plenty more of this boating content as time goes on the little subscribe button and the bell and all that sort yes. of stuff but now Andrew yes let's go to see Roger. 